Hello everybody. Today I am delivering the second lecture of the module 2. In the earlier lecture, I have discussed the formulation of the vibration problem using the equilibrium of forces and moments. So that followed the Newton's second law as well as the D'Alembert's principle. And I have discussed the difference between two. Now there is a very powerful method for formulating a dynamic problem using the work energy principle. And this method sometimes becomes very convenient when in a complex system there is very difficult to assign the sign of the forces and moment correctly. So in that case the energy principle will overcome this difficulty because energy is always a positive quantity. So there is no chance of doing any mistake in sign. So let us discuss it today. Uh, outlines of the today's lecture is work and energy principles, generalized expression of kinetic energy and then problem solving exercise. So uh, in these two topics, there are two main topics. One is work energy principles that I will discuss in relation to a simple system. Uh, oscillating system and then I will discuss how to take into account the non-conservative forces also. After that I will go to the more generalized case where the kinetic energy expression was derived uh, in terms of generalized coordinates and uh, then I will give an example of continuous system also. So let us see the work energy principle. We know the work done by the force and we know it is always a scalar quantity and given by the dot product of the force and the distance moved by the body under the action of the force. So a particle is shown here in this diagram is having the mass m and it is moving in a curve, curvilinear path and we define the position of the mass m here by a position vector r and then we, it moves a small distance dr where at this position the position vector of the particle is r plus dr and particle was initially at this point r1 and it is moved to another point which is uh, given by the position vector r2. So we want to find out the kinetic energy of the mass in moving from this point 1 to point 2 having the position vectors r1 initially and then finally it is having the position vector r2. Now in uh, dynamic problem kinetic energy is important because kinetic energy you know it depends on the, uh, the velocity mainly for linear system and then uh, it can be defined as the work done say dw is the work done uh, uh, undergoing a small displacement dr. So f dot dr is the kinetic energy and when the body is in motion the force f by Newton's second law is m r double dot that is mass into acceleration dot r vector that is the vector r okay. So R vector we have seen here. So we can write this MR double dot into R dot and this can be written as in the derivative form D half MR dot into R dot. Okay. So this can be easily understood that this is the kinetic energy of the mass. So you can see this the kinetic energy is half m r dot into r dot and after performing the dot product it becomes a scalar quantity as I have said the energy is a scalar quantity and therefore half m r dot square r dot is the velocity of the particle. So it is the kinetic energy of the mass. Now if the particle moves from position r1 to the position r2 under the action of force f then the corresponding work is determined by integrating this expression. 
So, after integrating this expression that means dw if I integrate I will find the work done in moving from position 1 to position 2 and after integrating dt I will find the change of kinetic energy from position 1 to position 2. So, therefore, the integral f dot dr limit is r 1 to r 2 when it is performed it yields the t 2 minus t 1 that is the kinetic energy at the position 2 minus kinetic energy of the position 1. So, that means change of kinetic energy. So, change of kinetic energy is the work done and therefore, this is very important uh, principle to formulate many dynamic problems. So, work done by a force in moving the body from 1 to 2 is nothing but the change in kinetic energy. Okay. Now, consider that given force is a function of position alone. So, in that case f is a function of r vector. Therefore, dw is equal to f dot into dr and we can write this uh, work done equal to negative of the derivative of the potential of this mass and therefore, this if I compare this um, expression with the earlier expression, then we can see that combining these two dw and dt, we can have very important conclusion that change of total energy that is T plus V, where V is the potential energy of the mass and T is the kinetic energy, change of total energy is 0. So, that means on the other hand, T plus V is constant. So, that is one important uh, conclusion that we get from this derivation and we will be using this to solve some problems in vibration. Okay. Now, principle of conservation of energy. For a conservative force field, if the force field is conservative, then T plus V is constant. For a conservative system, if we use the Cartesian coordinate, then we can write this f dot dr equal to minus differential of the potential is equal to minus bracket del v by del x into dx plus del v by del y into dy plus del v by del z into dz. So, this is uh, written applying the chain rule of calculus and therefore, it can also be seen that it is nothing but the gradient of the total potential and uh, we can now express this as gradient of total potential dot dr. So, where the operator this del represents this del by del x i plus del by del y j plus del by del z k vector i j k are the unit vectors along the coordinate axis. Okay. So, therefore, we get f is equal to minus operator delta v that is the gradient of the potential uh, total potential and we have defined this operator del as equal to del by del x i vector i is the unit vector along x axis del by del y j j is the unit vector along y axis and del by del z k is the unit vector along z axis. So, operator del is a vector operator. Now, from this we can easily derive the component of the force in the respective Cartesian axis. Say for example, we have the component of the force along x axis as f x equal to minus del v by del x. Similarly, f y we can get minus del v by del y and f z we get minus del v by del z. This is uh, easily understood that if I substitute this here uh, the operator del and if we write v from the earlier expression that we have found here the potential of v that is here if we write and then if we perform the dot product or just we will uh, isolate the component. It is not necessary to perform the dot product here we can see the component easily isolated 
in x y z direction so therefore in x direction it is minus del v by del x in y direction the force is minus del v by del y and f z is the force in z direction equal to minus del v by del z and this relationship is valid for conservative system force system okay now in uh, dynamics we encounter various non conservative forces the conservative forces are your this uh, the spring force and elastic force uh, whereas this uh, non conservative forces may be due to damping okay due to damping so therefore potential when we consider for non uh, conservative forces it will give a different principle so in that case d plus t plus v that is t was the kinetic energy of the particle and v is the total potential will not be zero there will be some other uh, quantity let us find this so generally uh, the force in the force acting in a body can be divided into two components one is conservative force field and another is non conservative force field so conservative force field it is denoted by the subscript c and non conservative force field is denoted by the subscript nc therefore in case of general force field this change of uh, this total energy will be equal to the work done by the non conservative forces okay so let us see what it happens uh, if i see this uh, this equation then it can be easily understood the rate of work performed by the non conservative forces if i take the divided this equation by dt then i find that rate of work performed by the non conservative force is equal to the rate of change of the system total energy so this is very important relationship when there is a non conservative force acting in the system we can derive the differential equation of motion using this relation in other way when the force field is completely conservative in most of the cases then we can take this right hand side of this equation as zero okay now again this equation conservation of uh, energy can be written in other way and it is given by relly so therefore it is known as relly's principle again if the given system is conservative the total kinetic energy of the system is zero at the position of maximum displacement that can be understood by the swinging of a pendulum you can see the maximum kinetic energy happens to be zero when the displacement is maximum but maximum at the static equilibrium position that means when the body passes through the static equilibrium position maximum velocity is uh, attained so therefore total kinetic energy of the system is maximum at that position for the total potential energy of the system it is just reverse what is mentioned here okay what is mentioned for kinetic energy is just reverse for the uh, total potential energy of the system so in that case we can write this equation t max when uh, the kinetic energy is maximum then potential energy is zero and when the potential energy is maximum kinetic energy is zero so this gives the total energy at the for the extreme position and uh, using this we can also find out this uh, equation of motion for the dynamic system okay so let us uh, illustrate this with a problem we have so far uh, is acquainted with the spring mass system several times i have told and you have also seen in many textbook the spring mass system is first uh, described for any vibration problem this is the simplest oscillator without damping that means there is no uh, conservative uh, non conservative force field now here the mass of the spring is heavy that means in earlier cases when we studied the spring mass system in general then we ignored the uh, mass of the spring so therefore we found out the uh, differential equation of motion where the mass of the spring does not come into picture but here we take the problem in such a way that mass of the spring is not negligible 
so here let us see rho is the mass of the spring per unit length and the length of the spring is l okay so we shall use this equation maximum kinetic energy equal to maximum potential energy now let us take a element of the spring of length ds at a distance s measured from this end and you can see here uh, displacement at this position okay is given by if x is the displacement of the mass x by l into s okay so velocity of this element will be s by l into x dot so maximum velocity will be attained at uh, the position when the potential energy is zero and that case the maximum kinetic energy will be s by l x dot max okay so kinetic energy of the spring now we can write half rho into ds that is the mass of the spring into s into x s by l into x dot whole square this is the kinetic energy of the system at any instant of time okay now for maximum velocity maximum uh, kinetic energy we shall substitute here the x dot with x max so here i have written kinetic energy maximum half m x dot m max square so what does it mean it means that it is the kinetic energy of the mass m then we come to the kinetic energy of the spring for the kinetic energy of the spring element is written here so maximum kinetic energy of the spring element is half rho x dot max l square l square uh, divided by l cube divided by 3 okay after integration it becomes first we have written in terms of s square ds so after integration it becomes l cube by 3 so you are seeing that total kinetic energy now is split up into two portion one is kinetic energy of the mass itself and another part is the kinetic energy of the spring kinetic energy of the spring is considered because the mass is not negligible so therefore we get at the extreme position where the potential energy is zero maximum kinetic energy of the system is half m x dot m max square plus half rho rho is the mass of the spring per unit length into x dot max by l whole square into l cube by 3 so after simplification we can write half m plus one third rho l into x dot max square that is the maximum velocity so potential energy of the system you know that maximum displacement is say x max so the potential energy of the spring is half k x x square max so maximum displacement here okay now for free vibration motion is always harmonic it is proved also in derivation so sinusoidal motion let the displacement of the uh, system is represented by x is equal to a sin omega n t where omega n is the natural frequency of the system so we uh, because to obtain the kinetic energy of the system we require this um, x dot max as well as your this velocity as well as displacement so the acceleration is this however velocity can be written as uh, this maximum acceleration is a omega n square magnitude and maximum velocity is a omega n okay so the maximum velocity square is here for the system this is the total mass of the system considering the mass of the spring now you can see the effective mass of the system is now m plus one third rho l so that is changed if you ignore the uh, spring mass then only it is m whatever we got earlier so therefore uh, this is the square of the velocity maximum velocity that is a omega n minus a omega n so after squaring it will be uh, the positive quantity then on the other side the maximum displacement is a and half k x square so half k a, a square it is coming 
Therefore, natural frequency is found after equating these two and we get the natural frequency of the system omega n equal to root over k by m plus rho l by 3. You can see if the spring mass is considered then natural frequency is decreased and in some cases spring must be considered such as heavy suspension in a vehicle. So, in that case this omega n is changed. So, this expression is very important uh, for the beginners and who are actually will be studying the advanced dynamics. Sometimes the spring mass has to be considered in the problem. Okay. Now, let us see another problem. You are seeing here a circular cylinder of mass m okay. and radius of the cylinder is r is connected by a spring of modulus k okay, as shown in figure. It is free to roll on the rough surface without slipping. So, you know the condition without slip. Find the natural frequency of the system. Okay. So, again we shall apply the work energy principle that we have learned, but earlier problem I have used the release principle that is considering the maximum potential energy and maximum kinetic energy. Here we will find the work energy principle that is considering the change of total energy at any instant of time. Now here again the system is conservative. So therefore, if I take the translation and kinetic energy, the cylinder is translating as well as it is also undergoing rotation. So translational kinetic energy is half m x dot square. Rotational kinetic energy will be half radius of the cylinder is r and this uh, distance that you it is moved is uh, rotation that is undergo, undergone by the cylinder is theta. So, rotational kinetic energy is half i, i is the mass moment of inertia of the cylinder into theta that square. Potential energy because only the spring is there, so potential energy of the system is half k x square. So, now write the total energy expression, potential energy half k x square is there and uh, total kinetic energy half m x dot square plus half r theta dot square it is coming. Non-conservative force uh, friction will be not considered here because the cylinder rolls without slipping. So therefore, uh, the considering this derivative of this expression with respect to time, let us find what we get. So, after differentiating it with respect to time, we get kx that is first we differentiate with respect to x. So, 2x will be there and 2 will be cancelling 2. So, it will be kx. Then we differentiate x with respect to t. So, it is x dot. Then we come here half m x double dot. We differentiate a x dot square. So, 2 x dot will be coming. So, it will be can 2 2 will be cancelled. So, a half m x dot plus if we differentiate x dot again x double dot will be coming. Then differentiate this expression we will get m r square by 2 it is a constant and from here we again get this x dot by r square 2 will be coming and 2 will be cancelled with this 2 and x dot expression will be there. So, after simplifying we get the differential equation of motion is 3 by 2 m x double dot plus k x. So, if this is the differential equation of motion effective mass you are seeing here 3 by 2 m and this is the spring constant k. So, therefore, natural frequency of the system is root over 2 k by 3 m and it's, it is a angular frequency, uh, circular frequency, so its unit will be radian per second. Okay. Now, let us come to another problem that is a very interesting problem where the potential of the system is considered only due to change of position under the gravity. So, there is um, uh, no spring attached here. Okay. So, here you can see the translational kinetic energy. This is the cylinder which is rolling in a semicircular surface 
or a circular surface of radius r. This radius is r and then uh, the cylinder's radius is r, small r. So it is again rolling without slip and therefore at any instant of time it occupies this position. This is dotted line indicates the position of the cylinder after giving after having an initial displacement and therefore AB is the arc length which is you can say this is the uh, result of translation of this cylinder from this position A to B. So therefore translational kinetic energy we get half m r minus r theta dot this uh, arc length AB for small displacement or small rotation the arc length AB will be almost straight line. So therefore we take r minus r theta dot and whole square this will give the kinetic energy of the mass in translation. Then rotational kinetic energy because this is a cylinder and it is having it is not a point mass so it has moment of inertia mass moment of inertia. So mass moment of inertia is I naught where I naught is equal to half m r square. And also if we see that a b is equal to r theta is also equal to r into phi. You see the change of the angle due to rotation of the cylinder. So therefore the another angle phi can be written in terms of r. So phi is related to theta by this relation capital R divided by small r into theta. At any instant of time kinetic energy is now half m this is kin translational kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy. So kinetic energy at any instant of time is now half m bracket r minus capital R minus small r theta dot square plus half bracket half m r square this is the I naught that is the mass moment of inertia of the cylinder into this uh, phi dot minus theta dot. So in terms of theta only we can now write r minus r divided by small r minus 1 whole square into theta dot square. So this is the kinetic energy expression of this system ok. This is slightly different from uh, spring mass system but again this is a oscillatory system and it is undergoing oscillation and coming to rest because there is no damping force here acting. So it is a conservative it is under the conservative force field. So potential energy is now obtained the change of position ok. The center of gravity of the uh, roller or cylinder is now raised by this distance r minus r this capital uh, small uh, r is the radius of the cylinder and capital R is the radius of the circular surface. So mg is the mass of the cylinder mg into r minus r into 1 minus cos theta that you can see this is the change of the uh, center of gravity of the cylinder at two position. So we get the potential energy as well as kinetic energy. Now we can write the total energy of the system after adding these two. So total energy of the system can be written as uh, this kinetic energy half then m r minus r theta dot square this is the this translational kinetic energy then rotational kinetic energy is half m r square r minus r minus 1 square theta dot square this is the kinetic energy. Now if we want to write the total energy then we will write this is the expression that is one part of the total energy plus potential energy mg, mg r minus small r 1 minus cos theta. So now according to the principle of work energy we have to carry out this differentiation to obtain the differential equation of motion. This differentiation equal to 0 since there is no conservative non-conservative force field ok. So this is 0 because there is no non-conservative force field.
force field. So therefore, we can easily apply this equation. Now, if I differentiate this expression, total expression with respect to T, then we can find that theta double dot this differentiation, uh, this is constant. So, this differentiation only you can have to take into account very carefully theta dot and double theta double dot. Similarly, here and here with respect to t when you define because we are differentiating with respect to t. So, therefore, if I differentiate this expression because this is constant, okay, only this expression if I differentiate then sin theta and d theta by dt, so theta dot. So, this you have to take care of in the fi final expression. Here also same thing happens twice theta dot theta double dot. So, in the next page I have written directly this expression and after simplifying you can see this is the expression coming for the differential equation of motion. M can be cancelled from both sides and then uh, for small oscillation we can assume that sin theta equal to theta. So, we get 3 by 2 r minus r whole square m theta double dot plus mg r minus r into theta equal to 0. So, this is the differential equation motion. Remember, this is the differential equation of motion. Differential equation of motion of this system that is difference from spring mass system. But again we can see that this is the effective mass and this is the effective elastic force or uh, that happens due to change of this position of the body that is giving the potential energy. So, using this m can be cancelled from both sides. So, therefore, we get this the natural frequency of the system is root over these two will come here okay these two will come here and then uh, denominator it will be 3 r minus r so this is the natural frequency of the system and unit is radian per second okay now let us see the kinetic energy expression and the generalized mass that can be extracted uh, from this for a discrete coordinate system ok. Now, choice of coordinate system when we discuss the motion of the body there are different options to choose the coordinates. We can choose these uh, coordinates uh, as a physical coordinates of the system or we can use the transformation to find the generalized coordinate. Whatever is the convenient we will take and uh, the ultimately our response quantity has to be converted again into the physical coordinate system. So, in some cases the physical coordinates are not always the best choice. So, we need transformation. So, let us discuss how the kinetic energy is obtained in that cases. So, take an interconnected system of rigid bodies and u1, u2, u3, um which may be constant. These degrees of freedom that I have written u1, u2, that um may be a constraint also that means some of the degrees of freedom may be zero because of constraint. For example, a end is fixed clamped then in that case the rotational degrees of freedom and translatory degrees of freedom uh, in the particular specified direction in which it is clamped will be zero. So, therefore, this can be reduced also in case of generalized coordinate represent the displacement translational and rotation. The kinetic energy of the system is written as 1 by 2 summation of mj u dot j square. So, that is necessary because for each particle if the system is discussed or discretized the element where the masses are lumped and each masses have the uh, degrees of freedom or this coordinates which describe the motion as u1, u2, u3, etc. Then we can write the kinetic energy of the system as half summation mj uj square. So, j here um, varies from 1 to m. Okay. So, for uh, converting the kinetic energy into generalized coordinate, we require some 
coordinate transformation. So, in that case uh, the physical coordinates again are the functions of generalized coordinates where the generalized coordinates q1, q2, qn etc up to uh, n. So, n is less than m. So, m is always greater than m, n cannot be more than m. From constrained u coordinate to generalized coordinate q. Okay. So, now if I differentiate this we can write del uj equal to del uj by del qk into dqk. This is by chain rule of calculus that we know. So, we can write this like that d uh, differential of this uh, u vector equal to some uh, matrix that is c matrix d into q. q is the generalized coordinates. So, actually we require this transformation matrix so that we can convert the physical coordinate system to generalized coordinate system where c can be easily understood as del uj by del qk. Okay. j is 1 to m whereas k varies from 1 to n. Okay. For linear system however this del uj by del qk is a constant quantity. The requirement of coordinate transformation is that first derivative of uj with respect to qk must exist. So, that is the requirement. So, therefore, we can write now the transformation as u vector equal to c matrix into q vector. However, for nonlinear transformation this matrix may be a function of q also. Okay. We will illustrate this with an example later on. So, in matrix form this we can write d differential of u vector equal to transformation matrix C into D into Q, where C is having this element C11, C12, C21, C22. So, we can write this with respect to a particular problem where we will discuss this later on. This is a spring uh, pendulum problem that means a spring pendulum. So, this type of pendulum has two degrees of freedom system. Okay. This may be one coordinate the extension of the spring that can be written as u1 and uh, this um, other is the displacement of this mass location of the mass from this point as u2. Okay. So, uh, again we have this uh, two coordinate system that is uh, q1 and q2 are the generalized coordinate where u1 u2 are these uh, this um, physical coordinates. So, in that case this transformation is required and for that we have this 2 by 2 transformation matrix and this is actually obtained by differentiating this expression d u j by d q k into dot q k. Okay. So, u j to QK transformation is done like that. Uh, this problem that is how the transformation matrix is obtained we will discuss after the uh, this uh, expression is fully derived. So, the square of the velocity is now u dot j square equal to double summation del u j by del q k del u j by del q l q dot k into q dot l. Substituting this in the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy expression you can see that uh, in terms of physical coordinate in is u dot j square and m j and then u dot j square after using this transformation we can write here directly substitute this here. So, after substituting we get the kinetic energy of the expression as half m j then uh, summation k 2 n summation uh, i to 1 to n k is equal to 1 to n and i is equal to 1 to n del u j by del q k into del u j by del q l into q dot k q dot l. Interchanging the order of summation we can now express this in this form we bring this q dot k q dot l here and we bring m j under the double summation 
uh, term that you have seen here. So, the term under the double summation uh, is your velocity the q dot k q dot l you can understand that the, if there is a interconnected mass and uh, when we take the summation of this in terms of generalized coordinates which has uh, the required transformation. So, therefore, it becomes uh, we can, have to write like that ok summation and under the single summation uh, notation you are finding m j del u j by del q k del u j by del q l and this is what is generalized mass. So, the concept of generalized mass is now derived from the transformation of physical coordinate to the generalized coordinates and therefore, the mkl that is the uh, element in the kth row and lth column is given by mj del uj by del qk into del uj by del ql. Okay. So, generalized mass expression that we want to extract in many problem by using this rule. In terms of generalized coordinates now kinetic energy can be written as simply half summation k half l m k l into q dot k q dot l. The result of this summation is now again a vector quantity a scalar quantity you know the energy is always a scalar quantity. So, m k l is the element of the mass matrix located at the kth row and lth column. Okay. Earlier we have seen that kinetic energy in uh, u coordinate system is this t is equal to half summation m j u dot j square. In the above equation m j are constants representing the masses or mass moment of inertia of the rigid bodies in the system. So, hence t is only a function of velocities that we have seen del u j by del t. So, therefore, uh, in many problems the kinetic energy is a, a function of u1 dot u2 dot etcetera that is the function of velocity. However, the generalized mass that uh, we are finding after this differentiation quantities we will see that this differentiation uj by qk is only a linear constant when the system is linear. So, for nonlinear system this will be a function of q also. So, therefore, the kinetic energy may be a function of displacement and velocity both. So, this statement is also proved with a certain example here I will give an example to prove this statement. In the special case when the transformation is this are constants we get kinetic energy is a function of velocities only. So, matrix equation for kinetic energy can be written here and using the transformation we can write u dot equal to c matrix into q dot. Therefore, we can write t kinetic energy as half q dot transformation c transformation into m c q dot and you can see easily this quantity is this expression is nothing but generalized mass. So, general mass here is m k l equal to uh, this c transformation c matrix transformation into mass matrix into c. So, this is the generalized mass ok. So, let us see an example. The example here again I will uh, tell the spring pendulum that I have just given a hints earlier when we were discussing the coordinate system. So, here you can see that uh, u1 and u2 or any other see, uh, you can also choose this other uh, dimension also as u1 and u2. So, this is the physical coordinate in which the mass is located, but spring undergoes the extension ok. So, therefore, the extension of the spring is k2 and the rotation of the mass is q1. So, eventually this is a 2 degree of freedom system. It cannot be a single degree of freedom system because of only one mass. So, therefore, in terms of u coordinates we write kinetic energy is half u dot transformation 
into m into u equal to half m u1 dot square plus u dot square. So, this is in terms of this u coordinate that is the physical coordinate. Now, let us use this transformation and see how the here you can see the kinetic energy is a function of velocity, but when we use the other coordinates say q2 and q1, q1 and q2 we may find a different relation where this derivative of q1 q2 as well as the q1 q2 themselves may appear. Let us see. So, from this diagram you can see that u1 is equal to q2 sin q1 and u2 is equal to q2 cos q1. So, that can be obtained by considering this triangle and using this uh, trigonometrical relation say u1 is equal to uh, q2 uh, sin q1, q1 is the angle here note that q1 is the angle and q2 is the linear displacement translatory uh, motion of this uh, spring. So, in that case that uh, u1 is written q2 sin q1 and u2 is written q2 cos q1. It can be easily seen that this side is uh, q2 cos q1. So, we get this. Now, we obtain the differential d u1 equal to q2 cos q1. We obtain this uh, with respect to q1 we are differentiating. So, del uh, d q1. Similarly, here sin q1 d q2. Here again we differentiate find the differential d u2 equal to because this uh, we have to differentiate two times because q2 is also variable and cos q1 is also variable. So, we differentiate this cos q1 and we get sin q1 and with a minus sign and then q2 remains as it is. So, d q1 we are writing and then again we differentiate q2. So, q2 differential coefficient is 1 and we write d q2 and cos q1. So, therefore, we get this transformation matrix now C if we write this in the matrix form d u into C d q. So, let us see what is C. C is nothing but del u1 by del q1 del u1 by del q2 this is the first row and second row is del u2 by del q1 del u2 by del q2 and after putting this you can see from this relation this relation if I write this uh, the coefficient of d q1 and d q2 then I can see the q2 cos q1 sin q1 minus q2 sin q1 cos q1 here you can see that the transformation matrix is not linear. So, therefore, obviously we expect that kinetic energy may be a function of displacement and velocity. So, generalized mass first let us obtain. So, generalized mass the expression that we have derived is C transpose m into C and therefore, we write this uh, the C that we have got q2 cos q1 minus q2 sin q1 sin q1 cos q1 then m is m 0 0 m c is again q2 cos q1 sin q1 minus q2 sin q1 cos q1. After performing this matrix product we finally obtain the generalized mass as m q2 square into m ok. So, hence kinetic energy expression is now you can see that in terms of generalized coordinate we have written the kinetic energy expression earlier involving this q1 and q2 uh, this derivative and therefore, we get kinetic energy after because here we have to write this three matrix product that is kinetic energy is equal to half qt dot this uh, the generalized mass matrix kl u. So, if I perform this uh, matrix product I will get t is equal to half m q2 q1 dot q1 dot square plus half m q2 uh, dot square. So, from this expression it is very easily verified 
that kinetic energy is not only the function of uh, this velocity. In terms of generalized coordinate, we have found that for a nonlinear system, the kinetic energy may be a function of velocity and uh, the displacement. So, the expression that I have written T is a function of say q1 dot q2 dot etcetera up to qn and it may be also contain this q2 q2 up to qn. So, in general kinetic energy may be a function of displacement and velocity, but for linear system when the constraint the derivatives of this uh, the elements of this uh, transformation matrix is constant then we of course get this uh, kinetic energy as a function of velocity in most of the cases it is so ok. Now let us see the kinetic energy expression for distributed coordinate system. Now let us see a vertical push uh, which is discretized into different masses and uh, the w i x represents the displacement of the ith mass. Here only I have shown the four masses, but there may be other masses also and q j, j is equal to 1 to n. These are representing the motion of the lump masses m 1, m 2, m n etcetera. So, let w x i be the displacement of the mass m i at location x i ok. At location x i we represent the uh, displacement of the mass x i which is given by w x i and it is written as summation phi j x i into q j. Q j is the generalized coordinate at the jth mass which describes the motion in a specified direction and phi j is the displacement shape, but this j represents the displacement of the ith mass displacement j f displacement shape of the ith mass and then we sum up over all the masses and we get the displacement of the mass m i at the location x i ok. So, uh, if phi j x i is the displacement of the mass located at x i in the displacement function phi j x i corresponding to the jth coordinate. In matrix form of course, we can write it w is equal to phi phi is a matrix into q. So, w dot becomes phi into q dot. So, therefore, kinetic energy expression T is half w dot transpose m w dot and therefore finally we can write t is equal to half q dot transpose into phi t into m phi into q and uh, we can easily see that this c uh, matrix when product we find out it represents a matrix which can be termed as generalized mass. So, again kinetic energy can be written in terms of generalized mass for the discrete coordinate system where the system or the particular structure is discretized into uh, different lump masses and then we can find out like that. Kinetic energy for the distributed system. Now, distributed mass system is having continuous distribution of the mass or may be piecewise continuous ok. For example, a cantilever pole say steel pipe is here which uh, mass is uniformly distributed, but sometimes this uh, the structure may be of different cross section. So, the cross section is larger at the base because you know that the in case of cantilever the bending moment is maximum at the base. So, therefore, in that case the cross section is smaller at the free end. So, therefore, in that case the mass distribution also varies. So, mass is a function of x. In case of three dimensional structure the mass is a function of x, y, z. Now, let us illustrate this procedure by a simple consideration of 1D element ok. So, let us consider a set of distributed generalized coordinate q 
uj equal to 1 to n, j is 1 to n. With each coordinate qj, there is associated a model function phi j x. For each coordinate function, we will find a assign a mode function phi j x. So, displacement at any point along the column. Now, x is any point you locate here, here or here, any point this is the x. Displacement is given by this phi j x q j. That means, if the displacement shape is known, you have to obtain the displacement at this point at a location x and then sum up all the displacement shape and q j is the generalized coordinate corresponding to the specified direction. So, therefore, velocity of this um, point and this uh, the structure that is uh, undergoing oscillation and velocity of this pole at this point will be w dot x equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n phi j x into q dot j because q is the time function. So, is time derivative is taken. So, square of the velocity that we require to use in this kinetic energy expression. So, we write w dot square equal to double summation phi k x phi l x q dot k and q dot l. So, this is w dot square. Now, for a continuous system, we have the kinetic energy suppose the mass is distributed m x and uh, this for a small element if I take d x and w x is the velocity and its square. Okay. So, for the whole domain of the structure that means here it is a one dimension. So, if I integrate from 0 to l and then use the factor half it represents the kinetic energy of the system this pool. So, now here we will write this uh, m x is there the integration is used and uh, instead of uh, w dot x square we use this thing. So, w dot x square is equal to phi k x phi l uh, phi l x into q dot k into q dot l dx interchanging the order of summation and integration. So, order of summation and integrations are interchanged here and we write here first q dot k into q dot l and we write l m x phi k x phi l x dx. So, this integration again represents the generalized mass. So, this represents the generalized mass of the system. Okay. So, generalized mass we can obtain now knowing the shape function of this structure. Okay. Let us illustrate with an example. Consider a pin pin beam that means two ends are pin just it, it represents a simply supported beam also. Uh, of course, uh, if one end is on the roller also the same type of displacement function can be observed. So, consider pin pin beam and the first two model functions the phi 1 x and phi 2 x are shown in figure this. Okay. So, this is the first model function phi 1 x sin pi x by L and this is the second model function sin 2 pi x by L. So, now we will let us proceed to find the generalized mass. Generalized mass say there are only two mode shapes. So, first we write this equal to phi 1 x phi 2 x dx and it is 0 to L this is the integration. Okay. So, here you can see the mass of the beam is constant here and uh, rho is the density of the ma uh, material. So, mass of the beam per unit length is rho into A where A is the cross sectional area. Cross sectional area. So, this is the mass m which is remains constant and phi 1 x because first element of the or first model mass that we are finding generalized mass. So, it contains phi 1 x and 
again instead of 2 it will be phi 1 x. So, phi 1 x square. So, that means sin square pi x by L. So, we can see this integration after integration this becomes m 1 1 becomes rho a L by 2. Integration of this is this function is L by 2 and rho a is constant. So, we can take rho a outside and integration of this will become L by 2. When we calculate this m 1 2 that is here the phi j, j is 1 and k is 2. So, sin pi x and sin 2 pi x by L because only two model functions are considered and rho is the mass. Integration of this results a 0 value. So, therefore, m 1 2 is 0. So, similarly m 2 1 is also 0. m 2 2 again integration 0 to L rho a sin square 2 pi x by L dx and again this integration is L by 2. So, model mass or generalized mass m 2 2 is rho a L by 2. A is the cross sectional area. Okay. So, let us see what we have done today. In today's lecture, we have discussed work energy principle and its use in formulating vibration problem, introducing the expression for kinetic and potential energy of the system. The conservation of energy was stated and it was used to solve numerical problems in conservative discrete system. Concept of generalized mass in kinetic energy expression was discussed and then generalized mass for a continuous system has been illustrated with an example of simply supported beam or pin pin beam okay for only for two uh, model functions thank you very much mm -hmm.